Greetings, Eric back, a naturopath. Thanks for coming back. We're still talking about stool testing. This time we're going to talk about the different types of stool tests that are available. I'm on the doctor's data website now, and I'll put the link in the description box uh, under this. I'm just reading here the different types of panels that they do. They do so many different types of stool tests, you know. You can just do a bacteriology culture alone. So looking at the bacteria, for example, at the good bugs, you know, lactobacillus or bifidobacteria, you know, versus the not so good bugs like uh, Citrobacter or Pseudomonas. Uh, we can do a calprotectin stool test, which is an inflammatory marker. <clears throat> we can do a comprehensive parasitology test, which is just a pure parasite screen, and that can be at times one, two, or three. So you can do a one sample up to three samples on three separate days. You can do the comprehensive stool analysis without the parasitology. So that's basically the markers which I like to look at, like inflammation, immunology, intestinal health markers, short-chain fatty acids, including the bacterial panel without the parasite panel. So, you know, you can do that as well to save yourself 100 bucks if you don't want to do a parasite screen. Um, you can do um, elastase, which is a pancreatic enzyme marker to see if the pancreas is functioning properly. You can do a helicobacter pylori antigen test, uh, which is bacteria that lives in the stomach. If you've got heartburn or reflux or GERD, you can just test for that particular bug. Uh, which is actually about one in four Americans have got that bug in their tummy. You can do an intestinal permeability test. There's several ways you can test for leaky gut. Uh, there's different drinks you can drink or breath tests you can do to determine how leaky the small intestine is. There's a lactoferrin uh, test and there's a lysozyme test. So these are two separate inflammatory markers. So, for example, if you're anemic or you've got low red blood, low hemoglobin, a bit of blood in the stool, you're worried about you know your gut. Um, if there's any possible bad sort of disease, you can check for inflammation. These tests are about 80 or 100 bucks for inflammatory markers alone. Um, yeah, it goes on and on and on. You can do a secretory IgA test, so you can just do a, a test to determine what your immune involvement in the gut is. You know, if this antibody is very high or very low, they can give you an indication on uh, if there's any potential inflammation there or food reactions or parasites upregulating inflammation. All sorts of information. You can do a Clostridium difficile culture test. So Clostridium is a bug again that lives in our gut, but it can be really bad uh, as well for some people. You can have an overgrowth of Clostridium creating a serious disease. Uh, you can do just a yeast panel on its own, uh, which some people might like to do. Um, I don't think it's a great idea just doing a yeast panel. I think you're better off doing a comprehensive stool test, which gives you all the analytes you're looking for. Um, yeah, it's just much, much better bang for your buck is to do a comprehensive test. But just to show you, there's at least 25 or 30 stool tests you can do. But the best one, in my opinion, is the comprehensive stool analysis uh, times three, including parasitology. That's the best opening test to do. Thanks for tuning in.